فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم whereas the 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 third one which is put under the universal is الصبر على أقدار الله المؤلمة and that's also categorized into two the universal is categorized into two the universal is categorized into is categorized into two one that is directly afflicted to you by Allah like for example your child dies a natural death or his time is over and he dies the second one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he legislates it through the hand of a person. This is the hardest one because you, you found somebody to blame now. Somebody runs over your child. This one you can see who did it. You can see who caused you this pain and <coughs> agony. This one Ibn al-Qayyim and before him Ibn al said it's the hardest one to be patient with. Then the author rahimahullah he brings Surah Al-Asr. Surah Al-Asr, the scholars, they differed upon what does the word Asr mean. Some they said it is, there are two views. There are two views what Asr means. Some scholars, they said Asr means Mutlaqul Waqt, the time in general. Allah is swearing by time, generally speaking. Others have said, no, it's not. It is specific. It is muqayyad. It is restricted. To what day is restricted to what to the sorry evening the evening asr time basically which of those two views are right the second of the two is right the reason is because when we look at an a word in the Quran. We have to observe two things. Number one is that when the Quran, if the word has many meanings in the language, in order for us to choose one of those meanings, what we have to do is two things. Number one is that, has the Quran previously used this word? Naam. And when it used it, what did it mean? Does it have a, does it have a particular way that it uses this word? So we observe, the custom of the Quran in this matter. We look at the urfu, urfu shara. We look at the custom and the usage of the Quran for this particular word. And the Quran, when it uses asr, what is it talking about? If somebody said to you today, Akhi Ta'al, I'll meet you at asr time, what would you understand it as time generally? Or would you understand it as a specific time? You would understand it as a specific time because this is urfu shara. The Sahabas also understood the word Asr to be Asr time. So it's the khitab, the usage of the word should be always restricted to the meaning which the Quran generally uses it for. And also the usage that the companions also used to use it. Because when the Quran was coming, the Quran was observing what these people are using. This surah it mentions that the people are in a state of loss. They are in a state of what? Loss. Except those who are muttasifuna bi arba'i sifatin. Except those who have four characteristics with them. Anyone who has four characteristics with them, then they are not in this. The first one is, amanu. Those of you who believe. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Iman. This is the evidence that the author is trying to use for the first one he mentioned, which was what? Knowledge. Are you with me, brothers? How is he trying to take the evidence from this? Because Iman's foundation, Iman's asal, the asal of Iman, the foundation, the existence of Iman will not be except if you have what? Knowledge. Because Allah says in the Quran, and the author is going to bring the evidence, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Pay attention to this. 
a person can't come with even the foundation, the, the, the essence of Iman, unless he has knowledge. Sah? Let alone the, the kamaluhu, that which makes the Iman complete. Are you with me, brothers? That's why he's, that's, the, that's the way he's trying to get the evidence from that. The second characteristic that's needed from a person, so they are not from those who are upon a state of loss, is وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Come with righteous actions. And this is the evidence for the second point that he wanted you to know, which is الْعَمَلُوا بِهِ Implementing that knowledge which you have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, what does he say? وَعَمِلُوا They do الصَّالِحَاتِ Righteous deeds. Why would Allah use righteous actions? Because Allah doesn't want from you just actions. Allah wants righteous actions from you. An action which is righteous is an action that fulfills two pillars. خالصا لله وفق هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم It is done with sincerity and it's in accordance to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's path and his way. That's a righteous action. Sincerity alone is not enough. And following the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alone is not enough. They both have to be there. That's called a righteous action. As for praying a prayer with no sincerity in it, it's called an action, not a righteous action. And you're still in a state of loss. Third is وَتَوَاصَوْ bilhaq, And they advise each other with the truth. Haq is a term that's used for something that is obligatory and it is required from everybody. And this is the evidence that the author is trying to use for what? A da'wah to ilayhi calling the people to. The Shaykh rahimahullah, the ayah that he's using here is more specific than what he stated. Because you're not going to only give da'wah. The da'wah has to be what? Haq. You can't just give any random da'wah that you like. And we mentioned what da'wah is haq? The one that follows the three pillars that we mentioned. The da'wah that follows the three pillars that we put in place. This da'wah is haq. And it is called what? It is called da'wah to Nabi. The Prophet's da'wah. Ala min hajin nubuwa. It is in accordance to the manhaj and the methodology of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. The fourth characteristics that's needed to become those who do not become lost is وَتَوَاصَوْ sabr, And they advise each other with patience. Those are the four characteristics. Whoever comes with them, he is not going to be in a state of loss and destruction and inshallah ta'ala in this world he's going to live a happy life. Prosperity, joy is what he's going to live. And the day of judgment inshallah ta'ala, Jannah awaits him. Then the author brought the statement of who? <coughs> Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i. And Imam al Shafi'i was born. And Imam al Shafi'i was born when the year was 150 Hijriya. That was the year that Imam Abu Hanifa died. The scholars they say, Mata Imamun wa wulida Imamun. One Imam died and another Imam was born. Someone, even to the extent of saying he died, Abu Hanifa died the, the month in which Al Imam Shafi'i was born. But that is far fetched. The year is, is proven. And Imam Shafi'i then died at the age. 54, so he died the year 204. This great Imam died at the age of 54. Does it not amaze you? It was a madhab followed. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدِ الْمَلِكِ الْأَصْمَعِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ الْأَصْمَعِ Do you guys know him? He was an Imam في اللغة حجة, he was a proof, he was a proof, enough. Asma'i said that's a proof. You don't need to ask more. He was an imam in the language. 
Asma'i said, I came to a young boy. Imam Shafi was only 16. He said, I came to a young boy, young boy, kid. And he said, I wrote from him the Ash'ar of the people of Hudayl. I wrote it from Shafi'i. Shafi'i memorized poetries. When he was asked, why did you do that? He said, Li al fiqha. So I can serve fiqh. The reason I'm learning the language is I want to serve fiqh. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be speaking about that more in our sharah of the kitab, Ta'adimul Ilm. Learning the Arabic language and studying it properly is what allows you to have fiqh of the religion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said the Quran in what language? In English? Whilst your library contains English books and you're reading English books, you're still distanced from the understanding of the religion. And you're still a foreigner from your own religion. The Arabic language is the key. And anybody who tells you that you don't need to learn the Arabic language, nowadays all of the books are translated, and, 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 has fooled you and has lied to you, has duped you, tricked you. The Arabic language's translation is not fully submitted, fully passed on to the person who's reading the book. This is a rich language. Allah chose it from all of the other languages, specifically, because it was the only language that could convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. The Arabic language is not owned by Arabs. The Arabic language is owned by every Muslim. That's your language. That's your language. Urdu is your second language. Somali is your second language. Arabic is your first language. We've been fooled to believe that that's not our language. This is your Lord talking to you today. If today somebody wrote you a message in a language that you did not understand and you, they had to give you money and they couldn't speak English, you'd like, you try to look for somebody who can translate this for you. Sah? And say, what does he mean? Tell me, what does he mean here? I really want to know because is he giving back my money and how much is he giving me back? You want to know? Allah is telling you Jannah and Nar and how he can take you to Jannah and the path to Jannah and everything. And you're, not, you're reading it, you don't even know it. It's gathering dust. It's a problem. So Imam al-Shafi'i said, I learned the Arabic language and he memorized Ash'ar, an Imam of the Arabic language. Al-Asma'i has to come to Shafi'i as the, at the age of 16, 16. And he took it from him. And that Imam al-Shafi'i was also a hujjah in the language. If you look at the ta'liqat that Imam Ahmad Shakir has on the Kitab al-Risala by Imam al-Shafi'i, whenever he comes to points that Shafi'i uses words that he uses in a particular way, if it seems like no one knows where he got this from, people just say Shafi'i said it khalas. If you use a word and somebody says to you, where did you get this from? It goes against the qiyas of the language and the sarf. And you say Shafi'i said it khalas. No one should ask you more after that. Because he stood over nawadir. Shafi'i would use rare things to bring it back to life, to show the people that it's used, but it's just, it's become, it's become what? It's become rare on the people's tongue. So it's a hujjah in the language. قال الشافعي رحمه الله الإمام محمد بن إدريس الشافعي السد هذه السورة this سورة لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه أما إلا هي لكفته if Allah was not to send any other surah in the Quran except this it would be enough for them but what does that mean عبد العزيز بن باز عبد اللطيف ابن عبد الرحمن ابن محمد ابن حسن ابن محمد بن عبد الوهاب and شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية and others they said what it means is that that it will be enough for them for a proof to be established on them. Surah Al-Asr is enough for Hujjah against you the Day of Judgment. Even if you don't know many more other Masai'in in the religion, Surah Al-Asr is enough as a Hujjah against you, a proof against you. Qiyam Al-Hujjah, Uqimat Alik Al-Hujjah. You wanted the proof to be established against you? Surah Al-Asr is enough for a proof to be established against you. And it is enough for you to know that you need to follow and submit Allah to Allah's laws subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the ahkam of Allah, whether they are hukum shar'i, which is talabi, or khabari. That's what Al Imam Shafi'i meant by it. But he didn't mean that Surah, uh, surah Al Asr is the whole religion. If any, no other surah came down and you just read Surah Al Asr, you would know how to pray and fast. No, no, it doesn't mean that. Surah Asr is, is a comprehensive surah. It's enough as a proof against you, hujjah against you. That's what it means. And the first thing that is uh, that this surah had in it is what? Al ilmu, knowledge, brothers, and having knowledge. Then the author, rahimahullah, he brought the statement of Imam Al Bukhari, rahimahullah. The statement of who? Al Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Al Mughirat al Bardizba. That's Imam Al Bukhari's name. Imam Al Bukhari, he is Sahih. He said, Babun, chapter, Al Ilmu knowledge, Qabl al Qawli wal Amal knowledge precedes speech and actions. And Imam al Bukhari's tabuibat, his chapterings are his fiqh. Bukhari, fiqh al Bukhari, Al Imam al Bukhari's fiqh is connected to his chapterings. He's trying to give you a fiqh from it. Are you with me, brothers? Is every time fiqh al Bukhari fi tarajimi? Is it every time? I've explained that in, in explanation I did in Kitab al Iman that it's not always the case. There's a tafsil that's needed here. You can find it there. Al ilmu qabla al qawli wal amad, that knowledge precedes what? It precedes speech and action. Don't talk and don't act if you have no knowledge. A person who's giving da'wah, who can't even read Surah Al-Fatiha, doesn't know anything about the religion, goes against this. Da'ad, being a da'i, with no knowledge, has no proof. You have no proof of that. You can't be a da'i whilst you're ignorant. Abadan. If, for example, you say, Akhi, you're drinking with your right, uh, left, drink with, you're drinking with your left, drink with your right. That's right, you can do that, even if you don't have no knowledge. But you just know this hukum, you're allowed to. But to set yourself as a da'i and say, I'm a da'i ila Allah, ad'u nasa ila Allah, calling the people to Allah, I'm guiding the people, and you have no knowledge of the religion, this is opposing the path of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam in his da'wah, was it not? Ala basirati, we just mentioned that. You have to do it with insight. Because the reality is, brothers, and we can't fool one another, is that I just recently, the other day, I went to Bristol. I had khutbah in Bristol. I prayed, I did the khutbah, just last Friday. When I did the khutbah, a man came up to me after the Salatul Khutbah. Came up to me, was crying, very emotional. And I asked him, brother, what's the issue? He said, I have a family problem. My wife and I, there's a conflict between the two of us. I need you to help us. You see, whenever, when you, when you set yourself as a da'i, that comes with it. So what did the poet say? إِذَا لَبِسَ الْحِبَارُ ثِيَابَ غَزٍ If the donkey wears a ghaz and dresses himself, the people are just going to look at him. يَا لَكَ مِنْ حِمَارِ حِمَارِ Sheikh Himar, how are you doing? If he wears a shibar. That's the reality of our time. If you say يَعْنِي three times, we are a student of knowledge to the people. You've got a pen here. That's the, that's, that's the kind of society we're living in. So to say I'm a da'i, I'm just going to stick to my path, it goes against the reality you're telling us about. We know the reality. Does that make sense? People are going to set you at as a mufti and ask you questions that are above your head. I just gave khutbah to Jum'ah. How does he know what I know? I could have just, this is all I prepared. He wants to take me to a qadha. Qadha between two married people and say, you're right, you're wrong sister. He's right and give me qadha. He doesn't know my capability and my credentials. He's an ammi, he's general mass. This is, what, this is what it brings. Being an imam today brings that problem. So, da'wah requires knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, sit down and educate yourself. Leave the majal for somebody who has knowledge. What did, the poet, what did Imam Ibn Hajar say? He said, مَنْ دَخَلَ فِي غَيْرِهِ مَنْ دَخَلَ فِي غَيْرِ فَنِّهِ أَتَى بِالْعَجَائِبِ Anyone who enters a chapter and a field that's not his, he comes out with amazement. 
Rahimallahu mri'in arafa qadara nafsihi Fawakafa inda haddihi May Allah have mercy upon a person Who realized his level, his limits And he stopped at his limits He didn't go beyond that He knows where he's He, he knows how far he can reach He pushes himself to, the, to as far as he can reach And then he stops there He doesn't go beyond that It's needed Then he brings Al-Imam al al bukhari statement وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The evidence for the statement of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari is what? فَعَلَّمْ no. Fa'alam means what? Fa'alam means no, have knowledge. Annahu la ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Wastaghfir li dhanbika and ask forgiveness for your. Ask forgiveness for what? For your sins. Asking forgiveness for your sins is a what? It's a speech and a. It's a speech and an action, both of them. Are you with me, brothers? Fa'alam came before it. That's the which of Dalala and how the author is trying to take the evidence from this. Which author am I talking about? Al Imam al Bukhari. Al Imam al Bukhari, this is how he's trying to take from the ayah. And also, Muhammad Abdul Abi is trying to use the same evidences as Al Imam al Bukhari. Which is, which is that La ilaha illallah, knowing it takes precedence of any speech or actions of forgiveness that you need to ask for. Who are you asking forgiveness for? What are you going to ask him in forgiveness for? How are you going to ask him forgiveness? All of that is, is a far'ah, it's a sub-branch from what? Knowledge. Scholars have shown that this statement of Imam al-Bukhari was already taken, istimbat of this was already done by who? His own teacher. Sufyan ibn already did this. <coughs> Rather, Bukhari's verb here, word for word, he took it from Sufyan ibn He took it from who? Sufyan ibn Uyayna. Abu Nu'aym al-Asbahani narrated in his kitab Hilatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya that Sa'id ibn Musayyab said Babu al-ilmu qabla al-qawli wa al-amala Carry on Annahu yajibu أنه يجب على كل مسلم مسلمة تعلم ثلاث هذه المسائل والعمل به الأولى أن الله خلقنا ورزقنا ولم يتركنا هملا بل بل أرسل إلينا رسولا فمن أطاعه دخل الجنة ومن عصاه دخل النار والدليل قوله تعالى إنا أرسلنا إليكم رسولا شاهدا عليكم كما أرسلنا إلى فرعون رسولا فعصى فرعون الرسول فأخذناه أخذا وبيلا الثانية أن الله لا يرضى أن يشرك معه أحد في عباده لا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل في عباده في عبادته ولا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل والدليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا الثالثة أن من أطاع الرسول وحد الله لا يجوز له موالاة من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كان أقرب طريب والدليل قوله تعالى لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون. The author رحمه الله The author رحمه الله He mentions three مسائل here that we all have to know male and female three matters which we have to know and implement. The first one is, the first of them is that it is obligatory to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Ya ikhwah, we have to obey Allah and his messenger. And that is because anna Allah khalaqana wa razaqana wa lam yaturukna hamala. And that is because Allah created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he provides for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not leave us hamalan. Hamalan means what? Mahmulaini. Ayla nu'mar wala nunha. That we're not going to be commanded and we're not going to be prohibited. Allah did not leave us like that. 
we are going to be commanded and we are going to be created. Uh, sorry, we are, we're going to be commanded and we're going to be prohibited. Because it goes against Allah's wisdom. Are you saying Allah was playing about when He created you? That He just brought you? You are belittling Allah wa Taala the wisdom of His actions. You're trying to say that He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He just does something. Just like a person who's writing somewhere and he's just playing around. Deists are the ones who believe that, right? No, deists are the ones who believe in God, right? What is it that, what are those who believe that God created us? Deists, right? Yeah, deists. Deists are the ones who believe that Allah wa Taala created us. He brought us into this world, but then he, got it, he left us. He doesn't want anything from us, he doesn't command us, nor does he prohibit from us. This is what? This is a group that is lesser in sharr than the atheists who don't even believe God's existence. Those are dim-witted. Debating with them and arguing with them, I believe itself is giving validity to the discussion. A person like that needs a medical check. And that's the way you should deal with them. Bring a medical report with you. You have to get checked. Because If I was to argue today and say, Brothers, it's night. Everyone, it's dark night, pitch black outside. Would you, would you open a debate with me on that? Brothers, would you have a discussion with me? You would laugh at me and walk away, right? You would be dim-witted if you'd had a discussion with me regarding it. And it really shows that you're slightly tapped as well to open a discussion with me regarding regarding the day so I believe a lot of a lot of people have given these people some form of validity in the discussion at hand Allah didn't give them that validity and that's right in the Quran Allah doesn't deal with atheism in the Quran nowhere in the Quran Allah only starts from rububiyyah Rububiyyah is where Allah starts from subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's what a, a sane person argument can start from. Sanity reaches Rububiyyah. From that point, okay, let's have a discussion. How do you not believe? Did he create you? Did he sustain for you? Did he provide for you? Yes. Okay. So why are you not worshipping man alone? That's the discussion you have. That's the one you discuss with. Amma, the one who doesn't believe it, is going against basic instinct. And sadly enough, as you can all see, brothers, it's gone to, to another level. That the debate has been pushed so much that they question your existence. He's talking to you, do you exist? Prove that you exist. I'm sitting in front of him and he says to me, prove to me that you exist. Do you, do you brothers think I'm not telling the truth in this? They are, they are this exists. It's become what? It's junoon, the way, the way it's everything. And that's what. And there are going to be a people who are going to make this into a debate now. And set a debate table for it. And say we need to discuss, and have an argument, whether I exist or not. It will. Yes, give it time. Sarahatan, it will. How many things did we think will never happen, happen in front of our eyes? A believer says, my time is more important for me to waste with you proving God's existence. It is. Your existence is a proof of God's existence. Khalas. And just leave it out there. Sorry, just quickly. My lecture at the university told me when I told them that this is not true, that you can't prove uh, uh, anything. I told him, what about the sun? And then he said, no, that would mean, what do you mean by the sun? Yeah, see? In front of the class. Yeah. And then I said, and then he said, no, no, just leave it. Leave it. He could very possibly because he came, he started talking about a sister, an Arab sister. He said this was the, his first lecture. He said, when I said this, that you can't prove any, everything, there was a, uh, a sister, uh, he didn't say sister, he said there was a, a female student from Saudi Arabia. So indirectly, he's saying that the Muslims uh, don't listen to logic and mm. all that. So. And they, she didn't like it, she was shocked when I said that you can't prove anything. 
you are students, you are learning here, and you have to be skeptical. You can't prove anything. Proof is not used in science. I told him, this is not true, with all respect. There are things that you can prove. What about the sun, for example? Just a, a simple example. He says, no, that would be what you mean by the sun. Uh, and I said, what do you mean? He said, no, no, you have to leave it. You have to leave it. It's, 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 it's not even sad. It's, you guys are all aware of uh, Lara's Krauss, right? The Majnoon. He wrote a book talking about basically he's redefining what nothing means. You know that nothing that we used to know has now become something. <laughs> nothing by time as time went on. I tried to read his book that he wrote. And Salahatan I thought I wallahi when I was, I was reading it, I asked, I thought to myself, I'm probably gonna be asked the day of judgment why I wasted my time. That the person's legs will not move from his place the day of judgment until he's asked about four questions. And I will be asked, An umri fima afna. Your time, what did you waste it on? It's a waste of time. I'm, honestly, I, it's better playing Call of Duty than reading that. <laughs> the book. Nothing is something, huh? The, uh, the universe is from nothing. Yeah, the universe is, is from nothing, yeah, so... Audhu <laughs> Billah. To the extent, the other day in a, in a group, they sent, uh, I suppose I went to read an article on it. They said, let's redefine what it means to be a human being, or animal. Let's define the word animal, so we can bring the monkey in. Because what they want to say is pictures that are being taken from monkeys is copyright. <laughs> are you with me, brothers? So, Allah, brothers, I'm telling you, it's headache, it's gharib, that the body has to give me, you can't just take a picture from me because we need to open the school. What is human? And what is animal? Who set the definitions? In linguistics, there's a class, in my linguistics class uh, that I study, there's a, we were doing what is known as gender sexuality, when you use the word he or she in class. So, the teacher said, um, now it's a, it's a bit weary of using the words he and she. So it's generally better, as time goes on, we await for words to come out that can be used for male and female simultaneously. In other words, it gives it, you know when people are born now, you don't have to tick male or female anymore. They don't say that anymore. They start in that now. Where the person, there's a, there's a blank part where he just ticks, he chooses when he grows, which one he wants to be. So in the class I said, this is, then I found the asal of the, the, the illness, where it's from. They divide between what is known as sexuality and gender. Gender is what Allah, the body parts Allah gave you and how you look downstairs. Whereas sexuality on the other hand, is something different now. So when you're using language and whatnot, this is it. So when we say, for example, male and female in the class, there's feminists in the class. I, their face turns blue, red, orange, purple. All the different rainbow colors. Uh, just because of word that's been used on the board. <laughs> so I'm thinking in my, in my mind, feminists must, must like the clothes that I wear. Because <laughs> in the class, a discussion came up. Men and women should wear the same clothes. <laughs> so a lot of people looked at me. Because <laughs> I wear so big clothes. That we should not be stopped and everybody should be going to the, like we should be going to the same toilets. We should be, naam, everything should be made the same. Anyways, the point is Junoon. It's just Junoon. And this is what? Wahyu Shaytan. It's a revelation from Shaytan. Shaytan has sent revelation on these people and they have a preconceived notion. They're coming to you, made their minds up, and they just want to argue with you so they can, they can strengthen their argument even, even more. That's what it really is. They go into 10 different debates, tackle different people, go home, what mistakes they did, how they need to rectify it, what shortcomings they came with, what they shouldn't say next time, how they should tackle that issue next time. That's all they're learning. They're just learning the art of argument. So some of them are even learning English on you. They're not speaking English properly. So they just want to learn English and you know, strengthen their English language. You're giving these people chances to learn. I'm not an uh, ESO class to debate with you or give you a one-to-one -one course. That's the truth of the matter. He's not coming for you to be accepted. Plus, it is wrong when a debate's happening that a minority debates with a majority. 
What it, what it means is that Islam is more in number today than atheists. Not that I'm saying because Islam is the most, it's haq. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that atheists are being given platform by us. We're giving them platform to spread what they believe. Do you get my point, brothers? So debates, I don't person, this is my personal belief, that this shouldn't be taking place. But when you debate with a Christian or a, they're more in number, so you're taking their followers. You're taking their followers. But when it's not, when it's the opposite, then that's not the case.